chemical research come the thousands of products that contribute to better living. The DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents the DuPont Cavalcade Theater, dramatic stories of people who were a part of the Cavalcade of America. This story begins in Akron, Ohio, early in the year 1955, in a hospital. This is a true story. Excuse me, is that uh, clock right? Yeah, I guess so. Thanks. Is this your first time? Uh, third. Pretty lucky. It's my, uh, it's my first experience. Really? Yeah. How about you? Mr. Hathaway? Mr. Hathaway, you have a son. I'll take care of this news. I, uh, I, what's the matter with that man? Is he uh, blind and deaf both? Yes, it seems he is. I knew about his wife, but I didn't know he was the same way. Same way? Yes. His wife is blind and deaf, too. in the corridor. She'd like to see you. Have her come in here, please. Yes, sir. Mrs. Pipes, right in here, please. I'll take these. Oh, thank you. Mrs. Pipes? Is she all right, doctor? She's fine. And the baby? As healthy a boy as I've ever slapped on the back. Oh. <laughs> you can see him before you leave. Oh, that's wonderful. They're such fine people. You've known the Hathaways for some time now, haven't you, Mrs. Pipes? Oh, I've lived next door to them for years. Well, then perhaps you can tell me about the plans. An infant takes a lot of care, you know. Yes, I know. They've looked forward to this for a long time, Doctor. And they've made their plans very carefully. They'll have a nurse, of course. Some of the time. But what mother doesn't want to care for her child herself? She and Harold have worked things out. And I'm right next door when they should need me. Well, personally, it seems to me they're going to run into a lot of trouble. But I certainly wish them luck. Well, I have another patient now, so if you'll excuse me. Certainly. I'll just wait here for a few minutes. I don't think I should interrupt them just yet. I'll see you again before you leave. Thank you. They're lovely, aren't they? Yes, they are. Oh, nurse, uh, put them just as close to the bed as you can get them. They smell lovely, too. Oh, Miss Hedridge, I put the sterilizer in bottles right where you said. Oh, that's fine. Are you sure Mrs. Hathaway only wants me to stop by in the afternoon? I mean, well, child care is a full-time job. Well, I know, but as long as you can teach Mrs. Hathaway to make the formula and bathe the baby, why, I'm sure they'll manage. Well, all right. Oh, Miss Edwards, don't move that. Well, I... I only thought it might look better over there. Well, we're not too concerned with looks, Miss Edwards. Oh, 
Oh, well, it might take you some time to get used to the situation, but I'm sure you'll work out fine. Oh, I hope so. I am worried about how to communicate with them, though, and learning about how they can communicate with me. Well, uh, Mrs. Hathaway can speak a little. It's hard for her, but she can when it's necessary. But you'll learn the hand system. It isn't too hard. I learned it. <laughs> now, that bassinet has been in that same spot for the past six months. Six months? Mm -hmm. All the baby's things. This dresser here with all his clothes in it, pins, baby oil, <laughs> even the travel. Oh, and look here. <laughs> this is what they used to practice with. The kids. Isn't that sweet? <coughs> My little niece has a doll just like it. Oh. <coughs> oh, that must be them. <coughs> Isn't he adorable? He's just beautiful. Shall I help her undress him? What do you think? I think she's doing fine. drive up. I'm Mrs. Pipes. I live next door. Can I help you? Yes, perhaps you can. Although I thought there would certainly be someone here with the Hathaways. I mean, someone I could talk to. Well, I sort of take that job on. I see. Then they are alone some of the time. Most of the time. Mrs. Hathaway carries a whistle on a string around her neck. Then if anything comes up that she can't handle, she blows the whistle and I come over. Are you from the newspaper? No, I'm Mrs. Van. I'm from the welfare department. Oh. Yes. I noticed the story in the paper last night. It was very interesting. Oh, yes, there have been a lot of newspaper people around here. As you say, it's very interesting. I wonder if I could look around inside. Well, I don't see why not. I think George is in the kitchen making the formula. Would you like to watch? I would indeed. All right, this way. She can feel the warmth of the formula when it reaches a six-ounce level. Well, shouldn't there be someone here to help her? Well, a visiting nurse comes in occasionally, and, well, I come over several times a day. We see that everything's in the right place. But it would seem so easy for her to make a mistake. Well, isn't it easy for any woman to make a mistake? Some are more careful than others. He certainly looks healthy. Oh, he's a wonderful baby. He's so good. Hardly ever cries. And when he does cry? Oh, Mrs. Hathaway comes over to him every few minutes and puts her hands on his chest. He cries. She can feel it. It's hard to believe that they could have gotten along this far. The baby's a month old, isn't it? Baby. Well, 
Thank you very much, Mrs. Pipes. Well, you're welcome. As you can see, everything's taken care of. Well, that's really not for me to say. I'll file my report and let my superiors decide. Thank you. Oh, Mrs. Van! What do you mean? Your superiors will decide. Just what is there to decide? Well, about the baby. Well, what about the baby? Mrs. Pipes, our job is to see that each child is cared for safely and properly. There will be a more extensive investigation of the circumstances here, of course, but offhand, well, I find it hard to believe that the Hathaway child is entirely safe. And just what makes a child safe, Mrs. Ann? The proper attention and the proper care is all we expect. If a child isn't receiving those things, well, other arrangements have to be made. I'm sorry. A case such as this one is hard on everyone concerned. I can't say for sure what the outcome will be, but let's be realistic about it. The child's welfare is our main concern. Well, thank you again, Mrs. Pipes. Everything seems to be going all right here. So far. We will return to Cavalcade Theater right after tonight's story of DuPont Chemistry. This is a busy man, an important man. His name, Leland M. Jones. His job, manager of the DuPont plant in Camden, South Carolina, where Orlon acrylic fiber is made. Like the other managers of 73 DuPont plants in 26 states, Leland Jones has great and varied responsibilities. He is the administrator and custodian of a multi-million dollar investment in buildings and equipment. He supervises an electric power plant capable of supplying light to a city of 25,000 people. And Leland Jones supervises the spending of some $30 million each year. This is money the plant spends to purchase materials and services. About 1,500 men and women are employed at the plant. And to every one of them, Leland Jones has a personal responsibility. He sees that they get proper training, safety protection on their jobs, and that they are given every possible opportunity for advancement. The annual payroll of the plant is about $7,500,000, and much of this is spent locally contributing to the prosperity of the community. Leland Jones is a graduate of Virginia Military Institute. He came to the DuPont Company in 1925 as an engineer in the construction division. As the years went on, he took on more and more responsibility, learning every phase of plant operation and management. Today, he is completely familiar with every step in the manufacture of Orlon acrylic fiber. But Leland Jones would be the last to have you think his is a one-man show. He believes in the principle that no man is big enough to do his job by himself. At all levels of DuPont management, authority is delegated and responsibility shared. The details of plant management are left to a trained staff of technicians and administrators. Men like Sam Cruz, manufacturing superintendent, Joe Sinclair, works engineer, Larry Steele, assistant plant manager, and others. One important responsibility of the plant manager and his staff is to the people in and around Camden, making sure that DuPont is a good neighbor in the community, that it contributes to a better life for everyone. These men also have another responsibility, to do their jobs in such a way that the traditions and reputation of the DuPont company will be maintained. The way a plant manager and his staff run their organization influences the earnings of DuPont's more than 145,000 stockholders. And it influences, too, the quality of the DuPont products that go into the things you buy. The DuPont company's plant managers and their staffs are key members of the industrial team that works to bring you DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. And now, back to tonight's true story on Cavalcade Theater.
check back if it doesn't work. Got a minute, Ed? Sure. Finish that tax story? No, not yet. There's something else I'd like to talk to you about. Shoot. You remember that story I did on the couple that had the baby, the blind and deaf couple? Yeah. Well, I just had a call from a Mrs. Pipes. She lives next door to this couple. It seems that the welfare department has started legal action to take the baby away from them. Did you check it out? Yeah, it's true. There's a hearing on Tuesday. I thought we might play it up big. Sounds like great human interest. Yeah. Suppose you run over and get a line on how the family is taking it and all that. We'll shell the tax story. No, no, it's no use going out there. The Hathaways, that's the couple I haven't been told yet. It seems that Mrs. Pipes didn't want to upset them. But I thought we could go ahead with the basic facts, no color. Write the story. We'll put it in a box on the front page. Write it. We feel the same way, of course. And it was nice of you to call. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, goodbye, ma'am. Edith, no more calls about the Hathaways in here, but keep a tally of those for and against. And keep track of all those letters, too. Collins. Right here, Ed. What about the follow-up on that story? I want you to play it up from the mother's angle. You know how she feels. Well, I'll have to wait tomorrow for that, Ed. I just spoke to Mrs. Pipes on the phone. She hasn't told the Hathaways yet. What? The whole city is concerned with this case, and the principals don't even know what's going on? She's been putting it off, but she says she'll tell them tonight. Well, hop over the first thing in the morning, then. The other papers are playing us up, too, you know. Let's not drop the ball. Right, Ed. Gave the baby his bath. Oh. And we had some callers this afternoon. More newspaper men? Yes, but I could handle them. But that welfare worker and a man from the probation department were here. Oh. I had to let them in. They were here about an hour, just watching. Well, did everything go all right? Oh, yes, just fine. I think the man from the probation department was impressed. And he has to file a report for the courts. Yes. Well, thanks for staying so late. I think you can go now. All right. Oh, the baby has a slight diaper rash, but it isn't anything serious. Oh, well, all right. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. I'd like to ask you, Mr. Brown. Yes, sir. How long have you been with the probation department? Oh, 
almost five years. Now, I gather from your report that, in your opinion, the Hathaways are providing adequate care at this time. Yes, sir, at this time. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I would now like to call Nurse Edwards. Uh, Mrs. Edwards, how long have you been employed with the Hathaways? I've been employed by the Hathaways for five weeks now. That was on a part-time basis. Yes, you see, Mrs. Pipes lives right next door. And whenever Mrs. Hathaway blows the whistle, Mrs. Pipes comes right over. Uh, then you have known the Hathaways for the past year, Doctor. Yes, sir. I see from the information here that you supervised a complete examination of Mr. and Mrs. Hathaway last week. Yes. Dr. Bourne, a very fine ophthalmologist from Cleveland, examined the Hathaways last uh, Wednesday. In the case of Mr. Hathaway, there seems little hope. But Mrs. Hathaway has approximately 10% vision in one eye. Dr. Bourne will need more extensive tests, of course, but there is a good possibility that a corneal transplant will restore her vision in that eye. I see. We also had more success with Mrs. Hathaway when we tested their hearing. While Mr. Hathaway didn't respond, his wife did respond to certain tonal sounds. Would you mind explaining just what that might imply, Doctor? Certainly. A person's reaction to certain tones often tell us how effective a hearing aid would be for the patient. In the case of Mrs. Hathaway, we feel present hearing aids are inadequate, but many companies are experimenting with more advanced equipment which might be of use to Mrs. Hathaway. Of course, it may be some time before such equipment is perfected. Uh, then you were the one that made the original recommendation that this case be investigated by the probation department. Yes, sir. I'd like to clarify our position, if I may. Of course. You see, the child is now an infant. It remains in a bassinet most of the time. But before long, it will be moving about, crawling on the floor. There are untold dangers he might encounter, dangers his parents are incapable of seeing or averting. Will you understand, Mrs. Van, that the question that this court has to judge is whether the Hathaways are providing adequate care for the child at this time. Yes, sir. I would like to say that the child appeared to be very well cared for each time I visited the home, but... I understand. Of course. Is there anything you wish to add? No, Your Honor. Thank you, that's all. The point raised by Mrs. Van is a valid one. Is there evidence of impending danger facing the child? Uh, technically, so far, the testimony upholds the Hathaway contention that they have provided safe and adequate care for the child at this time. I would like, however, some time to think over the point raised by Mrs. Van. We will now adjourn the hearing and reconvene tomorrow morning at 10.
Reviewing the testimony and evidence presented in this case, the court has reached a decision. There are really two questions to be considered. One, are the Hathaways now providing safe and adequate care for the child at this time? The answer to this must be yes, since there has been nothing to contradict this contention. The second question concerns itself with the welfare of the child in the future. Naturally, the court is concerned with the welfare of the child. But since the child is in no present jeopardy, and I cannot say what the future situation might be, the court rules that the child remain in the custody of his parents. It is the intention of the court to keep close contact with the Hathaways and their situation. We will appoint an observer to call on the Hathaways at regular intervals. If during that time a situation should develop which would appear to be dangerous to the well-being of the child, then, and not until then, legal steps may be taken to protect the child. But that is all. my baby cry. What you have just seen was a true story. you to be with us again next week when the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware will again present the DuPont Cavalcade Theater.